Hey and welcome back. A few weeks ago I had to case harden some parts in order to make the toolmaker's vise and a lot of you were interested in the whole process and some of you had questions as to why I did some things the way that I did. So in this video I'd like to answer those questions and show you some of the test samples that I did before I made the vise as well as subsequent changes that I've made to the process to improve the case hardening. Now the first thing I want to point out, because I'm not sure how clear I was in the vice build video, case hardening is simply the process of taking a softer metal and heat treating it in such a way that the outside becomes hard but the inside stays soft. In doing this you can combine the best characteristics of a soft and hard metal into one part. Soft metals, as we know, can take a fair amount of impact force without sudden failure, but at the expense of having poor wear resistance and low strength. Harder steels tend to be the opposite. End mills, for example, are very hard and wear resistant and a lot stronger, but when they fail, they tend to do it without much warning because they are more brittle. A case hardened part can, in some situations, be the best of both worlds. A really common part that gets case hardened are gears. The face of each gear need to be wear resistant because they do get a lot of wear. And obviously you'd use a hardened metal. But if it's through hardened, there is the possibility that the tooth could fracture under load. So by giving it a softer but tougher core, we can get the best of both worlds so the gear won't wear, but it does have that toughness to take the load. Of course not every gear is like this, there are tempered gears for certain applications, but obviously this is just a general overview. As well as using case hardening to get a hard surface and a tough core, it's also used as an alternative to using high carbon steel. For example, a lot of cheap hand files are actually case hardened because it's usually a lot cheaper to case harden a piece of low carbon steel rather than just making it from a piece of tool steel. Tool steel can actually be pretty expensive and if the only part of the tool that's actually doing any work are the teeth, it's usually a lot cheaper to make the file from a low carbon steel and simply harden the outside. Obviously it's not going to be as good as a proper tool steel file, but most people simply aren't going to notice or even won't know. And even though you do have to go through the added process of raising the carbon in the steel, it's often a lot cheaper than using high carbon steel from the beginning. For example, I could pick up a 6 meter long piece of low carbon steel for about 50 bucks, but if I wanted to do the same in a piece of 1045, it's going to cost me about 76 bucks. And if I wanted to get the same piece in 4140, that's going to be almost $120. So you can imagine when you're making a hundred thousand or even a million of these things at a time, case hardening can really save you a lot of money. And this process is obviously common enough that there are a lot of pages on knife making forums where people have tried to make knives from old files thinking that it's made from a 1095 steel only to discover that the core is actually low carbon and it's been case hardened and therefore you can't quench harden it. Now in case hardening, there are several methods to actually case harden a part. There's flame and induction hardening, which is actually commonly used to harden lathe beds. And there are other processes called nitriding and cyaniding. But the method I want to focus on here in this video is carburizing, because it's the most accessible method for the home workshop, and it's the method that I've done before. The method works by taking a low carbon steel, which you can't quench harden because there simply isn't enough carbon in the steel, and what you do is you expose it to a carbon rich environment at a high temperature in a forge. This creates a high carbon case which you then can heat treat. Now I've had a few people ask me why I chose to do all of this rather than just buy a piece of high carbon or tool steel. And it's a fair question because there is a lot of effort and labour that goes into making case hardened parts, especially in a home workshop. It's not a quick process and if I could avoid it, I would. 
The reason why I chose case hardening rather than just buying a piece of tool steel is just material availability. If I could get large pieces of tool steel in flat bar in the lengths that I need, I would do that. But in my part of the world, that isn't an option. The local industry really favours low carbon structural steel. So when I go to the hardware store and my metal supplier, generally what I can find on offer is low carbon structural steel. It's great for welding, but it's not good for heat treatment. Yes, I am able to get 4140 in round bar, but it's generally not sold as a flat bar. Unless I order several meters of it, which is going to be several hundred kilos, it's just not going to be an option for me. Now the most basic way of carburizing a steel part is to simply heat it up to red hotness and stick it in a pile of crushed up charcoal. This process has been done for hundreds of years and it will produce a hard case, but the case will be extremely thin, even if you repeat this process several times. A few people also reached out to me and suggested that I quench it in used motor oil and that can result in some hardening and I haven't been able to verify that but enough people mentioned it that I think it is at least plausible and I need to test it sometime in the future. However the most efficient way of case hardening a part at home would be to pack harden it. This includes packing a part in a sealed metal box with crushed up charcoal and heating it in a forge for several hours. By doing this, the charcoal will produce carbon monoxide gas in the forge and at these high temperatures, the steel can actually absorb the carbon, which it gets from the carbon monoxide. The carbon diffuses into the steel and it raises the carbon content. Obviously that seems pretty straightforward, but there are a lot of variables which can affect the result. So therefore I did a bunch of testing before I made the vise to see exactly what I was going to do. I did the testing with some 6mm steel rod. I'm not exactly sure what grade or carbon content the steel rod is, but a quench in water showed no change to the steel's hardness, so it's definitely low carbon. As the source of carbon, I am going to be using crushed up charcoal. You could probably get away with using barbecue briquettes. I have seen people online do it and they've gotten pretty good results. But according to the forums, they do use other additives which may affect the case. So I would stick to using charcoal. To harden the parts, you'll also need a container or packing box which can be heated in a furnace for several hours. Traditionally, you'd use a box made of wrought iron, but we don't live in the 18th century anymore, so just make it from welded up steel, and in my case I made it from galvanised tube. I did have to remove the galvanising before doing it, but apart from that, it worked just fine. Next, we can lay down a layer of charcoal, and then we can lay in the part, and then we can cover the part in charcoal. And it's at this point where things start to fall into a kind of grey area because a lot of the resources that I have started to contradict each other. Some of the books that I have say you need to completely fill in the box with the carbon whilst other sources I have say you only need to cover the part and you can leave a space in the packing box for the carbon monoxide gas. From the testing that I did, I did it both ways and it didn't seem to affect the part all that much. I did find that if I left a big enough space, the gases would expand and it would crack the mortar, so I tend to leave no gap, but doing it both ways seemed to work. As for sealing up the box, you do want to get an airtight seal. In most of my videos, I've been using a high temperature mortar, which has had cracking issues and that does tend to let out some of the gas, but it still seems to work just fine. Recently I have switched over to using an air drying clay and that does seem to work a lot better than the mortar but I have had issues with the clay sticking to the metal so scuffing up the metal with some sandpaper or a file tends to make it stick a lot better. And once it all dries you can put it in the forge. Now for this process to work, the metal needs to be in the austenite phase, which means you need to heat the metal above 723 degrees Celsius. 
anything below 723 degrees isn't going to work. So what I've been doing is I've been leaving the part in the forge for 30 minutes to an hour depending on the size of the part and letting it soak to allow it to get up to 723 degrees celsius and then I can start the stopwatch. Obviously I don't know the exact temperature inside the packing box but I think half an hour to an hour should be long enough. Now the depth of the high carbon case is really dependent on the time and temperature. As a general rule of thumb, a lot of people say the case depth will travel inwards at about 0.1 millimeters per hour, and although it can vary based on time and temperature, this is a pretty good rule to follow. And obviously, 0.1 millimeters per hour is not fast at all, so this process can range from 1 hour to well over 12. The only good thing about it though is if you're using a forge, the forge is pretty well insulated, so once you get the parts up to temperature, you can run this process on only a few psi of gas. I was running on about 2 or 3, and the gas lasted a lot longer than I thought. And once the part is done, I'll usually leave it overnight in the forge to anneal, and according to the machinery's handbook, doing this will get you a much better crystalline structure than you would get if you were to simply quench it immediately. So after letting it anneal overnight in the forge, I can then heat treat it in the same way that I would heat treat any other carbon steel. What I have here are three pieces of steel that I've case hardened for about an hour and a half. I'll heat all of them up and I'll let one piece air cool, I'll let another piece quench in linseed oil, and I'll quench another piece in water. The piece that air hardened developed a hardness of around 40 Rockwell C, which was a little bit more than I was expecting. The piece that I quenched in linseed oil developed a hardness of around 55 Rockwell C, and the piece that I quenched in water was around 65 Rockwell. So given that I was looking for somewhere in the region of about 58 Rockwell C hardness for the vise, I chose to go with a water quench and then bring it down to 58 Rockwell C by tempering it. And speaking of tempering, even though it's 100% necessary to temper a through hardened part, it's not always 100% necessary if it's case hardened. However, it's definitely recommended that you at least do a low temperature temper to reduce the chances of cracking. I did my temper at around about 150 degrees celsius for a few hours and that brought the hardness down to about 58 Rockwell C hardness. And 150 degrees celsius is far below the normal temperature range that you would use for most tempering. Also if you grind a part on a bench grinder, you'll be able to see the sparks of a high carbon steel mixed in with a low carbon steel. It's a bit difficult to see, but the shorter sparks that split off are high carbon, and the longer sparks that don't are low carbon. Another thing that you should consider is how the depth of the case harden actually affects the parts. What I have here are two pieces of quenched steel, and they both have the same hardness, except one has a deeper case than the other. The one with the thinner case is able to withstand the force of bending without cracking, whereas the one with the much deeper case takes a bit more force to bend, but it quickly snaps. So the depth of the case really does matter, and the longer time spent hardening may not actually produce a part that is necessarily better. The final thing I want to do is answer some questions some people had about case hardening. A lot of people pointed out in the Vice video that me simply dunking the part in water to cool it down probably ended up warping it, and that's due to the steam jacket that formed around the part due to the Leiden frost effect. And from what I've read, that is probably true. Going into this, I did know that dunking it and moving side to side would probably warp the part, but what I should have done is move it up and down ever so slightly to break that steam jacket. So that mistake is 100% on me. Alternatively, I could have used a 10% brine solution. I did know that brine helped reduce the lead and frost effect and the overall steam jacket, but I didn't realise just how much of a better job it did compared to normal water. 
It took a lot of digging, but I found a study that compared the Gliedenfrost effect and how salt can affect it, and it really does make a huge difference. You can see in the regular water how a steam jacket actually coats the metal, whereas when it's mixed with a 12% salt solution, that effect is greatly reduced. So yeah, I would definitely have to keep that in mind when heat treating stuff in the future. I also had a few people ask why I didn't use a sodium carbonate mixed in with the charcoal. Sodium carbonate should help reduce carbon monoxide gas at high temperature and it should help harden the part. And remember, sodium carbonate is just simple washing powder, so you can buy like a bag of it for about three bucks. And the answer simply is, well, I didn't think of it. All of the books that I have referenced barium carbonate, which is not something that you'd want to use in a home workshop, but it didn't reference sodium carbonate. But after doing a bit of digging online, I found a few recipes that said to add anywhere between 2 and 10% sodium carbonate by weight. So what I did was I went down the middle, added about 5% sodium carbonate and tested that. Now I only did it for about an hour, but the result was a much deeper case than I got doing normal charcoal. If we look at the piece that was done in pure charcoal and compare it to the one with carbonate and charcoal, you can see that the layer of hard martensite is a lot deeper. And martensite being the hard but brittle formation of carbon and steel that does all the work when hardening steel. So yeah, to all the people who suggested that I use sodium carbonate, a big thank you to you because this is going to save a lot of time case hardening and I am going to get much better results. And with that, that is about it for now. I hope you found this video useful, especially if you are looking at doing this at home. This is obviously just a very basic overview of case hardening. Obviously, I didn't want to get into TTT diagrams, but it should be enough for anyone to get into case hardening and get some really good results from it. And with that, thank you very much for watching. See you next week.